Welcome to the fast button tutorial on the 2023 Toyota Highlander XLE. We're going to start from left to right, we're going to cover all the buttons, and then we'll finish up with the screen. Let's begin. Alright, so starting on the door, there's auto down windows all around and auto up. You just do a hard push or a hard pull. There's a window lock button to lock the windows, it'll give you a little green LED. And then I have my door locks, the locking one has two little nubs. For the mirror adjustment, I can turn this to the L and toggle the left mirror. Then I have neutral and the R position for the right mirror back to neutral. Down below is the hood lever to release the hood. Also the gas door release for the locking gas cap. A quick little storage area. The hatchback button for the height adjustable hatchback. You push and hold till you hear the beep and it will go up. Same thing for the way down. This button here activates the automatic high beams. So as long as my headlights are in the auto function, I push that and I'll have automatic high beams when the stalk is pushed forward. This button here is to turn off the auto start stop feature where the engine turns off at the red lights. Above those, I have the odometer and trip function here, and then this is a little symbol of a speedometer with a light bulb. I can decrease or increase the brightness to the speedometer and the interior lights. The headlight stock has a couple different positions. I have DRL off to turn off all the lights. Automatic, which is going to activate the automatic high beams, will also give me daytime runner lights and kick on all the lights when it senses the vehicles in the dark. Parking lights for if I'm parked but want the interior lights but don't want bright lights coming out of the front of the vehicle. And of course headlights, say I want all the lights on now during the day. I also have a ring here for the fog lights. If I tap this and let go, I have a three blinker for the highway. Same thing for the right. And onto the right stock, I have the wiper blades. So I have a couple different levels here. If I click down once, I have intermittent. That's when I can change how often they go. If I click it down again, they're low. And if I click down again, they're high. This section here of the wiper stock activates the rear wiper. I only have two options here, intermittent or on. The third option is off. And then up top, I have the different symbols for the washer fluid. If I push it away from me, it'll do the rear wiper and the rear washer. If I pull it towards me, it'll do the front windshield and the front washers. I have two pads on the steering wheel, one on the left, one on the right. On the left pad, I have different arrows here with a select and a back button to operate the MID, which is the multi-information display. I will go into the multi-information display in just a moment. I can answer and hang up phone calls right here, change the volume to the phone call or the music, and even do voice commands or Siri or Google. So if I do Google Assistant or Siri, I have to push and hold this for two seconds, and the little icon pops up on the bottom of the screen there. On the right side of the steering wheel, we have the cruise control, lane departure alert, music modes, and music selection. So to set the cruise control, I hit the radar button, then I hit set, and I can increase or decrease the speed right there, which will show right on the MID. To cancel, I can hit this, or I can just step on the brake. For the automatic cruise control, I can set the different following distances right there. If I push and hold this button, on the MID, the symbol will change. The car will disappear and the arrow will be on the left. That's after I hold the button for about three seconds. So just to show you, if I push the button once, see the little symbol there? Now let me turn it off. Now if I push and hold the button for about three seconds, boom, that's your constant speed cruise control. It's the old school cruise control that will not slow down automatically for you. So just keep that in mind. You do have two different cruise control systems on the Highlander. On the MID, using the arrows up and down, there's a couple different menus here. So you'll see I have the different symbols along the side. Starting with the leaf menu, I have digital speed and distance to empty. If I go to the side here, I have some more information about my gas mileage with a small digital speed right there. And then I have a third menu here, which kind of gives me like an eco score. Down again, this shows me the direction that I'm traveling in. So while driving at a glance, you can see what direction you're going in the Highlander. And down to the next menu is the music. So that'll show what music you're listening to, the artist and the song, all while keeping a digital speed on the right there. Down again is some vehicle information. I can see the tire pressure individually. If I go to the side, I can even see the all wheel drive control so I can see how much power each wheel is getting. And if I move over again, it'll show me which of those systems are active. The pre-collision system is one of the uh, parts of the safety sense system, where if the Highlander senses a person or a car, it'll try to brake for you to mitigate the crash. The blind spot monitor, that senses when somebody's in your blind spot and will light up an orange light in your mirror. And the rear cross traffic alert there on the bottom right will alert you if it senses cars driving around, so it's detecting movement while you're in reverse. If I go down again, this is the settings menu. 
This is where I can change the settings to different features. So I have the lane departure alert settings, pre-collision system settings, cruise control settings, blind spot monitor on and off, and rear cross traffic alert on and off. Say I want those features turned on and off. If I go over again, I can turn on and off the road sign assist, which is where it'll display certain road signs on the MID. Some vehicle settings here, which is where I can change the high adjustable hatchback and some detailed display settings. So starting here, if I press and hold OK, this is where I can do some advanced settings to the lane departure alert. Going over to pre-collision, if I press and hold OK, a little more basic, I can change the sensitivity or turn it on and off. Right here, if I press and hold OK, basically this is just the curve speed reduction for the dynamic radar cruise control, which will reduce your speed during a curve. Something convenient and safe. Moving over to this, this is where I have a little bit more advanced settings. The PBD is my hatchback. If I go to opening adjustment, this is where I can change the height setting for my hatchback, which is really nice. I can even change the beep volume. Going down here, this is where I can change it from standard to extended for the auto start stop. That's when the engine turns off at your red lights. Here is where I can set or change the wheel for the tire pressure warning system sensors. Usually the mechanics do that, or the technicians when they do your tire rotation. Rear seat reminder for children and pets. I can turn that on and off, and I can even change some settings for the maintenance reminders. Moving over here, if I press and hold OK, I can change the language units. I can turn off the little eco badge. That little eco badge comes on and off to let you know when you're driving economically and when you're not. What that basically means is it's feeding off of your throttle input. So if you're giving it a heavy foot, the eco badge goes away. But if you're lighter on the foot, you'll have that badge more. The badge is like a little cookie. It's just going to promote you driving with a lighter foot on the throttle. Digital speed, I can even turn off if I don't want it. And then down here, I can do some even more advanced stuff here too, like total tank or trip on the fuel economy. It goes on and on, guys. I can change what shows on display and what doesn't. I can even turn the MID off. Check that out. So if I want more of a simple view, say I just want the time here, what gear I'm in, and my miles. I can set it like that and then I just push any button again on the pad, on the steering wheel, and that pops back up. I can even go back to default settings, say I messed some stuff up and I'm not happy with it. And there is my settings menu. Down one more menu to the little orange warning sign. It's just warning me that I don't have my seatbelt on, but the car is on. So once I plug in my seatbelt, you'll see that little orange symbol will go away. There you go, no messages. So this is where the Highlander will store different messages. Say it's somebody doesn't have their seatbelt on or it needs maintenance soon or it sends something happened with one of the sensors. It's gonna let you know and it's gonna keep it there until it's taken care of. Back up to here, I can go over one and this is the screen that most people like, digital plus the range. And that concludes the multi-information display tutorial. Let's move on to buttons near the shifter and then we'll do climate control. So for buttons near the shifter, I have a lever here for sport, normal, or eco. When I go up to sport, you'll actually see the selection on the MID, and the bottom of the screen is going to light up red. When I toggle it down to normal, it'll go white, and then when I toggle it down to eco, it's going to go blue, as you can see. Sport's going to give me a little more power and reduce my fuel economy by a notch. Normal's going to be just for regular driving. Eco is going to depower me slightly but boost my fuel economy by a couple miles per gallon. You can do whatever mode you want whenever you want it. So play with it and see what you like. The multi-terrain select is right over here. So I have the mud and sand, normal, or the rock and dirt. There's going to be a different symbol on the MID also for these. It's pretty self-explanatory. For mud and sand, it's basically going to enhance the system to handle mud and sand a little bit better. I don't recommend going mudding or sanding in this vehicle unless you're prepared for what that requires. But if you're on a light sandy trail or a light muddy trail, yeah, you can use this and it will help you. Same thing with rock and dirt. This is going to be for your basic gravel trail or some loose rocks. You're not going to go rock crawling in a Highlander, but this will kind of enhance the all-wheel drive system to handle that stuff. Do your research about what kind of off-road trail you're going to be on and, you know, how in-depth it's going to be before you even consider taking a Highlander off-roading, in my humble opinion. This button here is your automatic parking brake. When you take it out of park, it releases on its own. When you put it in back in park, it re-engages on its own. A great feature next to it is the park hold. When I push this button, I can actually stay and drive but take my foot off the brake and it will hold the brake for me while applying the brake lights. 
super convenient for the drive through and also for city traffic. It will not hold when you're in reverse. Think about that for a second, guys. It will definitely not hold when you reverse because then you'll forget what gear you're in and you can go blast off in reverse and it will not work unless your seatbelt is on, which makes sense. This button will actually turn off your traction control and your vehicle stability control. Great for the bad weather if you really want to optimize power to the wheels, but for normal driving, it could save your life. Snow mode over here will actually take off in second gear instead of first to reduce the amount of torque to the wheels, which will increase your traction. And then decline assist control will help you descend a very steep hill, and the Highlander will do the braking for you for those really scary steep hills. In my area, people never use this, but say you have an area with a super, super steep hill, this could actually take the anxiety out of it and let the Highlander handle it for you. On to the shifter. Pretty simple straight shifter, reverse, normal, and drive. When you shift over, you can go into manual mode and you can shift up and down through the eight different gears on the eight-speed automatic transmission. Back to park, and in a moment, that automatic parking brake engages. You don't have to pull this or push it. It does it for you, which is great. Also by the shifter, you have your three USB plugs. I have a USB, uh, the old school one, and then two USB-Cs. And then, of course, a really old school flip-up 12 volt plug here up top i have the wireless charger you just tap your phone on there and it will start charging if you have a really thick case it might not charge so just tap your screen and make sure your little battery symbol shows the little electric sign showing that you're charging and you're good to go hazards are right up top by the two vents and next up is the climate control so for the climate control you have these two big knobs those are the two different temperatures one for the passenger one for the driver of course i can synchronize and it will synchronize to the driver like so if i want to turn on the rear climate i can hit rear right over here or i can turn it off it'll show you right on the right corner here the rear just the temperature but say i want more information about the rear climate or i want to adjust it i just tap rear climate and the little bar pops up that's where i can adjust their fan speed their air direction and their temperature right there and then i tap rear climate to go back into the front Say I'm in rear climate with the bar here, right? See how it's up and pointing to rear? And I leave it there for a few minutes. It'll actually default to the front for you so that you're not getting confused. See? Just did that. So I can have three different temperatures here and two different fan speeds. One fan speed for the back, one fan speed for the front. The heated seat button is right here on the left. And for the passenger, I have one here. And then we have eight different buttons, four here and four here. So I can turn the system off. I can resume it just by doing this, turning up the fan speed. Here I have the defrosting wiper blades, the rear defroster plus defrosting side mirrors, and the front defrost. Very convenient that these are together because you can just go one, two, three, and you're defrosting all of the windows and the mirrors and the wiper blades on a cold day. This is just showing my synchronization, my fan speed, my air direction to whether I'm in the front or the rear, and then of course my rear temp. So this just lets me change the rear temp really quick. Just a reminder, that's the actual full control for the rear, back to the front. See, if I put this up and I do that, that's how you can see the fan speed difference. Or say the rear passengers need a little more. There they go. This button here will actually turn off the rear system. A little bit of a redundancy there, but it'll actually cancel everything except for the driver, which is nice and then that turns the rear back on. Recirculate is over here, which you're gonna to wanna to use with the AC on a hot day. Uh, it's cold out today, so I definitely don't wanna use these, but do be advised in the hot weather, use your AC and your recirculate together because it's gonna cool the air that's already cold and it's gonna help the system strain a little bit less. So that's a quick overhaul of the climate control system on the Highlander. Let's do the overhead features and conclude the video with the screen. So up top, you're greeted with the auto dimming rear view mirror. There are three buttons here for home links. You can link into three different garage door openers. I have the on off button for the auto dimming feature. Most people leave it on all the time, but there could be an instance when you want it off. Sunglass case, if I go halfway up, I actually have a conversation mirror where I can see my rear passengers a little easier. Pretty cool. You should see how small the conversation mirror is on the Sienna. And then I have my individual lights here. And of course I have the door operation for the lights. I can turn it off so none of the lights come on when the door's open, or I can turn all the lights on now in all three rows. Open and close for the sunroof are right here, and then I have up and down. Let me demonstrate those for you real quick. So say I just want a little bit of airflow. I can ventilate just like that. Just don't forget to close it when you're done. You don't wanna get any rain in here. 
And when I open it, I only have to hold the button down for a few seconds. It's gonna stop at the most noise resistant position, but there is a little bit more space there too. To close it, I just push the button for about two seconds and it closes automatically. And then I have the option to close the shade here as well. Say I don't want all that sun in my face. I can just keep it kind of shady in here. And the most important button is actually right over here. That's the SOS button with a, a door to guard it so you don't accidentally hit it when you're fishing around at nighttime. The SOS is for Safety Connect. Toyota provides Safety Connect to you for one year unlimited miles on a brand new Toyota. You just have to sign up on the app, activate it, and if you get into an accident, they'll actually know exactly where you are so that they can send EMS to your exact coordinates, which is gonna take the guesswork out of it, especially in this busy world. After that, there's a small monthly charge. Right now, the going rate in my area is $8 a month. It's a nice, cheap insurance, so if anything happens, they will know exactly where you are to find you and help you out. These are all the overhead features. Besides that, I just have a traditional mirror with a flipper. Now you'll notice on these, there's no little slide out, but you can actually, you'll see the two little arrows. That means you can slide it back and forth. A little tough from the factory, but that's okay. So that's everything besides the screen. Let's finish up the video with the coveted 12.3 inch infotainment system. So when you first get in one of these cars and you wanna test drive it, you're probably just gonna have the option to do this as a guest, which is gonna limit the amount of stuff that you can use. When you buy the car and you wanna get connected, it's going to give you a little QR code or it's going to give you a little bar where you put your cell phone number in. It's gonna send a link right to your cell phone and it's gonna take you to the Toyota app, which is where you are going to download the app and create your account with your email and your VIN. If you already have a Toyota in the Toyota app, it's gonna make this very streamlined for you. And that's where you can activate your account. Then what you'll be able to do is connect to Bluetooth and access your Apple CarPlay or your Android Auto. But to make this easy, let's go back to the Toyota interface. You don't have a home screen anymore on the Toyota interface like you used to. And also your power and your volume button for the radio is on the passenger side. Very interesting that they did that. I suspect they did that because it's gonna make it easier for the passenger to play with the music and turn it on and off since you're basically gonna be operating everything from here or the volume position on the steering wheel. I do also suspect that eventually these screens will just be buttonless, which is what we see on a lot of the smartphones. But back to the Toyota interface, there are some pretty in-depth controls that you can change here. This is where your profiles are gonna be for who's operating the vehicle. Now, when we go up to here, this is gonna be our Toyota navigation, but if I go up to CarPlay, I can actually use the Apple navigation. So you have choices for navigation. You can even use Waze or Google Maps, but back to the Toyota interface, the phone symbol is just gonna bring you to your Apple or your Android phone system and show you your contacts but the car and the settings menus are gonna be the main menus that you go to when you're on the Toyota interface to make some changes. So here I can just kind of digitally change my climate control system. Slight redundancy, but for the people that are very digitized and they like to you know, see things a little bit bigger, say they're having a hard time with this, at least they give you that. For the rear, I can also see that at a glance too. This is a little less confusing than this, I will say, so it's kind of nice. You know, there's different type of learners out there, there's different types of operators out there. This speaks to, you know, two different types of operators. You have your big symbol people, and then you have your little levers, those types of people. Then of course you have your options. You can turn on the eco heat and cool, which I do recommend, kind of takes the drag out of the AC system. And you can turn on the de-icing wiper blades, or I think that's just de-icing in the front, sorry guys. But that's just the basics here for vehicle. I can even see some trip information, gas mileage, stuff like that. All wheel drive. This is just gonna you know, give me a quick big version of what I saw in the MID already for the all wheel drive control. And then for vehicle alert, it'll just show me if there's any alerts. Also those would be showing in the MID as well. So you're seeing the integrated network between the two. This just makes it look a little bit more modern and new and big and easier to see. Really helpful for people that are just straight up newbies to tech or if they're a little on the old side and they're just having a hard time seeing the smaller stuff down over there. The setting symbol is where you're gonna spend pretty much any of your time on the Toyota interface because you'll usually be bouncing back to your smartphone's interface. But on the settings, this is where you can do your personal info. You can you know, set up your Bluetooth devices. But as we work our way down, the general settings is where I can change my time. I can do the screen sensitivity, turn the beep off. I can do keyboard settings, language and units if I'm traveling or if I speak a different language. But back to that, 
I can access my Wi-Fi here for hotspot. Display, great screen. I can change the brightness and contrast or I can just turn the display off. So I tap the screen again. So just pro tip, right? Say you're in CarPlay, now you want the screen off, right? You go to Toyota, settings, then you go down to display and then you hit display off and you can still listen to music on your Highlander and you'll have the screen off and you don't have all this bright light shining in your face, which is really nice. Say you did adjust the brightness, but it was just not enough adjustment. You can just keep that off, which some people like to do at nighttime on those long commutes. If I accidentally tap it, it doesn't automatically come on, which is really convenient. See, say somebody tapped an accident. It gives me the option. I think that's very nice that they did that. Back over here, sound and media. I can change my equalizer here over here, the levelizer. I can even change my ringtone messages. I turned off the text messages on my profile, but if you have that on, you can change that right over there. There's my equalizer there for sound tuning. Let's see. And of course, on the bottom, you have your dealer info, uh, info and security, more advanced stuff over here, software update. You can check for your updates. Vehicle customization. Just like on any other Toyota, you can change how long the lights stay on when you turn the vehicle off, the auto sensitivity for the auto high beams. If you want daytime runner lights on, I do suggest you have them. How long the interior lights actually stay on when you turn it off, door control. So, you know, say when you put it into drive, the doors lock, but when you put it into park, you want them to stay locked. You can change that right over here. I can even change the settings to the smart key, the auto re, uh, relock timer, and I can even turn off the feedback lights. So when I click the locker on the, the smart key, if I don't want the Highlander to blink, it won't blink. Or say it's a little loud for me, that beep beep, I can actually turn that down a little bit so it's not as loud. That's the bread and butter to our settings here on the Toyota interface. Here are just some navigation settings for the Toyota navigation. I'm trying to keep it concise. I will admit I don't suspect most people to spend a lot of their time in the Toyota interface. In fact, a lot of people leave the stuff standard. But, you know, your vehicle customization is where you can really play with things to make the Highlander fit you more. Now on to the CarPlay. So you saw what I did there, right? You just hit the little symbol here. That's where your, your CarPlay is going to be. So when I hit that, I go to the whole Smart Face interface. Everything changes. Now say I want to get back to the Toyota interface, I just hit the Toyota badge. So you don't really have a home screen like I mentioned when you're in the Toyota interface, which a lot of people are used to. But when you're in the CarPlay interface, there's a symbol here for your home screen right there. So that'll show you different information right there. Now I can do this, I can go back to apps, and I have my apps. So the older interface did have that home screen option that some people like, and then you can just tap something to do it. So I have a calendar reminder, my music I can play, which I'm not gonna play now due to copyright. I can find stuff and it has my Apple Maps right there. If I hit this little symbol here, that just goes to the apps. Then I can scroll through the different apps. And that's kind of where this tutorial ends because, you know, you just got to play with whatever apps you like. You know, you can make a phone call, you can make a text message. It's going to do an audio text message. It'll read it to you. There's my ways. And you can set it so the phone searches for apps that actually operate between these two systems. So you can see I have my off-roading app there for when I'm in my Tacoma. Now say I want to go back to the map, I can just hit this real fast, see? So I want to go back to the music, boom, right there. Yeah, I've been listening to some classical guys, I will say. And then just to get back to the Toyota interface really quickly, I just hit that black Toyota symbol right there. So that concludes the fast button tutorial of the 2023 Toyota Highlander. I hope it was useful. I tried not to make it a super long one like the last few have been because a lot of you are already familiar with this setup because of the 2022 videos. But if you're new to the Highlander and you need a more in-depth tutorial, please do check out my 2021 or 2022 Toyota Highlander tutorial videos. They go a lot slower and more in-depth. If there's something I missed that you want to go over, you already know you can find me in the comments. But with that being said, thank you so much for watching. Give it a like if this helped you. Please consider subscribing for more useful Toyota information and tutorials. I will see you in the next video, guys. Peace.